Welcome one and all to Last Stop Penn Station podcast featuring Carrie Silken and Ian Riccoboni. They dive deep into Carrie's wealth of stories and no subject is off limits. From the world of wrestling to his ticket agency, growing up in New Jersey, drug-fueled underground days, hustling in the French Quarter of New Orleans, and endless days and nights in New York City, every story is worth telling. Happy Friday, everybody. It is Last Stop Penn Station. Ian Riccoboni, our producer, AJ from Basan Creative and Web Design, and our guest of honor, Carrie Silk. And Carrie, it's a, almost that time again. I'm almost going back into the bubble, the immersion of the Ring of Honor bubble. Well, you got a bubbly face <laughs> and a bubbly nose. <laughs> well, that's good. You're going in the bubble. Um, I might be... Uh, in a miniature bubble. Yeah. Well, you're vaccinated. Um, and Fully uh, vaccinated. Fully, and we encourage you to, too, if you haven't got your appointment, Rite Aid, Walgreens, CVS, they're doing, just walk yeah, you in. you can just walk in. Walk in and uh, Lehigh Valley Hospital, St. Luke's. You just do it and you'll feel better. It's just for peace of mind. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. So we're almost through this. We're in the bubble. It might be the last one. It might be the second to last one. Maryland State Athletic Commission is being very friendly because Ring of Honor is following the rules and it's a good relationship there. I'm excited, though. We just we were just sent a couple of the matches. We won't reveal them uh, because uh, your presence may or may not be needed based on what I saw. OK, so. Well, I was wrong mm. when you were hinting at who your special guest commentator was. Ah, I thought it was going to be Dave Prezak. Oh, well, that's a good guess, but it's... Because you mentioned women's wrestling. Sure, it's Shimmer. And <clears throat> so I, right away, and, you know, he has a good Ring of Honor history. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. And when I saw that it was Lenny Leonard, yeah. it was like, that, that sort of, to me, it sort of came out of left field. No, just Lenny is a good guy and a good announcer, but I, yeah. was, I was surprised. How did that happen? Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you the story, and, um, you know... Back at Madison Square Garden two years ago, uh, I had an idea to recognize some of the folks that had been with Ring of Honor in the past. And Lenny had always been a guy that I enjoyed listening to and Dave. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be neat because we were all going to be in the same general area. We were all going to be in the same place. And they really laid a good foundation for Ring of Honor, Lenny and Dave did. And so I had pitched, hey, why don't we have Dave come in and Lenny come in and do the opening match, the, you know, the women's tag team match or do the, the battle, the honor rumble. Were you talking about for the, uh, anniversary show that didn't happen? Well, that came back up. <laughs> so for, for MSG, for G1 Supercard, okay. I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if we, if we That's recognize kind of you. Yeah, and I and I had asked our executive producer, and he was for it. But we knew that there were some very specific production requests from New Japan, as there should be. They are they are a partner for the event, and we knew that we already had a crowded booth because we had myself, we had Kevin Kelly, we had uh, Colt Cabana, Caprice Coleman, and we had Chris Charlton, who was helping to translate the Japanese wrestlers. Not to mention, uh, I just watched the other night. I was showing a friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, some of the gardens on the. Um, the latter match, Nick, yeah. Aldis Nick Aldis was in the booth, and I'm sure there were many other bonus color commentators. Sure. I forget. Yeah, there were a few. And that night, you know, we had the uh, Toro Yano, uh, Yano <laughs> came up and did some commentary. He tried to sell us a DVD, but also did some commentary <laughs> as well. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a great night, and I tried to get Lenny in. And, you know, I, I really, we need to appreciate the past. We need to appreciate the legends. One of the reasons I re-signed with Ring of Honor, I made this very clear, is that my hope is that part of me wants to leave a legacy. And I have a shot now to be the longest reigning commentator in Ring of Honor history, which is something that I would I would like to do. Who are you behind? I'm behind Lenny and Kevin Kelly. Okay, because Lenny, in my era, mm -hmm. see, it's funny because with the DVDs, the way they were done back when I owned the company... We weren't doing live commentary right. at the shows. So going back to the beginning, it was 
Doug and Gabe. Right. Under various names, Chris right. Lovey and um, yeah. Right. And then um was Lenny next? I know Prazak and Lenny Leonard were uh going down to Florida to do the tapes. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the order. You yeah. probably do. Oh four, oh five around then. Yeah. And then Lenny, the last match he called for Ring of Honor was was in 09. I think Lenny went the Gabe train. He did, yeah. Which is fine. Everybody's mm-hmm. entitled to do what they want. Sure, and he's he'd been their lead announcer he's for 11 years. So, I mean, definitely, he's he's one of the best kept secrets in wrestling. He's got a great voice, and he's you know somebody that when I when I was a fan of Ring of Honor when I was in college, it was very welcome to hear Dave Prezak and Lenny Leonard. So, I've been tr- slowly trying to you know for, kind of from a personal thing. It's like when you're a wrestler and you want to wrestle another wrestler, or if you're a baseball player and you, you you're good you know you want this guy to be your teammate. I've been trying to do that, and I've at least for a one-off, at least for the women's tournament, at least you know, um, Caprice is my partner, and he'll always be he'll always be my partner. And I told him, you know, when the Black Lives Matter, when the George Floyd protests happen, that if he goes, I go. If there's any reason, you know, he was worried he was, he was speaking out, and he was a little scared. He said, if I speak out, what are they going to do? I said, well, if you go, I go, and that's we're team. Okay. And so. You know, Caprice and I are in this together, but when you have a chance to add on, it's like the, the 2000 Yankees when they added late in the season, Chili Davis, Jose Canseco, they they added up to the bullpen. You know, they added like five all-star relievers. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, Carrie is fixing my Mickey Mouse hoodie. Where's the other? other? Yeah, we got a blue string. And for those of you not watching, I have a multicolored Mickey Mouse. Ladies. <laughs> ladies, extra large. It's beautiful. It's it's very fashion forward. <laughs> Here's a man that works out. He's in great condition, although he he fleeced the he fleeced society by getting a COVID shot under the guise of obesity. <laughs> I can't help it that the government says says I'm obese. That's man's right. in perfect shape. Yeah. Handsome, good looking, in perfect shape. Appreciate with a it. Beautiful, multi, <laughs> uh, beautiful cheese bag. Multicolored <laughs> Disney, uh, uh, which he picked up with his brother. But anyway, I yeah. interrupted with Flair. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's an opportunity to bring in. He's still at the top of his game, and it's it's when you have a chance to improve your team, you do it. And Lenny's got a tremendous experience calling these women's bouts whether it's for Shimmer, Shine, you know, those organizations. So we're bringing Lenny in. And not to be confused with Shemmy Shine. No, not, no. <laughs> and we're really excited. And I'm, I'm glad for him because he and I have talked for years. And there was people when I took the job. Kevin Kelly, he was very supportive. And I know you're going to knock it out of the park. I'm going to give you pointers. Take what you take what you can from the pointers and tell me to F off when you, you know, when you feel like you're and he gave me just very, very fatherly advice. Like, listen to me until you feel like you can't listen to me anymore. And, you know, Lenny reached out right away, too. He said, uh, this is very exciting time for Ring of Honor. You guys are on TV. You're much bigger than we were. You're going to do great. I've heard you. You're going to rock it. Well, this is a uh, a tribute is not the right word. This just shows Ian's character because most people, whether it's in entertainment, whether they're working at a factory, are worried deep down about their own livelihood. So why are you going to want to bring in somebody who's who's great? Right. They might say, holy, holy shit. We got the wrong guy. (laughs) Right. So uh, I tip my hat to you for doing that. Thank you. And it meant a lot that Lenny reached out because there was other commentators. I had one person, I don't think I ever told you the story, who has been on national television that said, I don't think you're ready. Please let them know that I'm available. Really? Yeah. And uh, that person hasn't been on TV since. <laughs> so oh, now we're now. I'm- yeah, I will tell you the name off off the air. And uh, it was really disheartening because I had done. Uh, I'd done one television taping and they were just starting to air. So they were just starting to, you know, be available. And this person reached out and said that. Now there's some mean people out there. There really are. And then there's some other people that, you know, they 
they want to try and get in. They sense there might be an opening, but they're they're generally nice and generally okay. And and you kind of you know you let it be water under the bridge. But I'll never forget that person, and they can kiss my ass. There you go. So there you go. <laughs> well, as we move along with last stop Penn Station, um, if you're a listener of ours, you certainly know about the wonderful fifty five and five, the Parkhurst wrestling card series that we do that Ian does on his YouTube channel and is available on Conrad's ad free shows. Mm -hmm. We've really, it's really been fun doing them. Uh, I think we're up to, we're we're two thirds of the way through. We're up to 90. We just did the, uh, the consummate hunk, Don Leo, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, What a a main event guy. Yeah. Big burly. Yeah. You know, the, the Mormon giant was his nickname. That's my favorite one we did this week. So, well, we're taking a break. Yeah. Those who are uh, Ian's uh, for uh, work reasons, mm-hmm. we're just, uh, it's going to be a, a one week break in the uh, 55 and five. Yeah. One week or two weeks? Maybe two, but you can, this gives you plenty of time. There's 90 episodes, nine yeah. zero. And if you, you want to learn about classic wrestling, go to 55and5.com, takes you to the playlist. It starts with Vern Gagne. It goes to guys that we can't even confirm are human beings. <laughs> See, this <laughs> is something that as a fan and the type of fan I am, I would really love because um, I love the whether it's pro wrestling or baseball or political stuff I like, historical stuff. Uh, I like the obscure. Yeah. And I like the uh, to these deep dives. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I would be glued to that. There's a really good podcast called, um, now I'm gonna, it's so good that I'm going to forget the name of it. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, Al Getz oh, and yeah. John Boucher mm-hmm. charting the territories. Right. And, this, and, and these guys have gone out of their way, Al Getz particularly, um, to chart um, Mid-South. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leroy McGurk, right. match for match, wow. uh, card for card. She's traveled around to uh, libraries. I saw he was in Louisiana during the the midst of the pandemic to, right. to look at microfiche. <laughs> right, trying you know, and and he's got this really interesting stuff. And John Boucher, and I know they I know they listen to us mm-hmm. uh, or have listened to us. I, I messaged them. Their last episode was really good. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so it's not for everyone, but it's for people that really want to dig deep into wrestling history. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Brian Malonis today. Oh, yeah. And we were talking about a lot of things ranging from the Boston Red Sox to uh, ROH to, you know, our personal lives. And the question came up, and we've touched on this before, if you're in the... If you're in the arts, or we'll, we'll just keep it to the arts. If you're a young hotshot guitar player like AJ's son, mm-hmm. is it important that he knows about uh, like the the history of uh, Jimmy Page or Eric Clapton or Santana? Does it matter? I mean, yeah, you know, he could play the songs mm-hmm. or listen to the songs, but to know about like where they came from and yeah. what they did. Is that going to make them a better guitar player? Or as far as a wrestler, yeah. if they learn about the history of wrestling, uh, is that going to make them a better wrestler? Uh, I just think it's important to know history. Yeah. Although it really doesn't ma- I guess it, what do you think? Yeah. It, it's really interesting because sometimes the, sometimes the idea of being isolated can spur innovation. You know, there's the idea that if somebody isn't exposed to these things and only has a narrow viewpoint, there's a chance they might innovate because they haven't been inspired or, or, but then the flip side of the coin is the inspiration (laughs) where if you're inspired by something, you also might innovate because you may be able to build on something that, that somebody else did. I, you know, it's, um, in my dad over the years, I think we've talked about this, he kind of makes fun of me every time I find a, I, I say a new band, but it's Humble Pie or it's, uh, you know, um, 
geez, small faces, same, you know, Steve yeah, Marriott, same Marriott. thing. Um, but, you know, I'll say, oh, dad, you know, I, I found this great song by Small Faces. And he'll say, I, you know, it's, it's Tin Soldier. And he'll say, oh, great. Next, you're going to tell me about that up and coming band Fog Hat. <laughs> and, and he kind of, you know, throws these gems. But, um, you know, it's not it's like these wrestlers. No one's talking about them. And there's this fear they're going to be forgotten. And I do think there's I do think you can be great at something without knowing its history. I do think that you can you can exist in a bubble and develop greatness. But I think it's easier to become great if you embrace the history. Right. And you was that a Kevin Sullivan said this to me. If uh, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Brian uh, Malone has said to me, yeah, some of these kids I know, these students, you know, that he's. Uh, in the independent scene, they'll be talking about an old classic match and they're talking about Batista. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So Brian agreed with that line of thinking. Yeah. You know, and I've told this story before, uh, but uh, Jim Carnett was with us in uh, Cleveland mm -hmm. and uh, he was out and he was leaving the building and I don't know how it came up. And I know I've told this story, but too bad, folks. <laughs> but uh, this is back in the era of, you know, Samoa Joe, mm -hmm. Brian Danielson, uh, 04, 05 era. Punk, and, you, yes, on my side, yeah. And one or two of our top stars didn't know who Luthez was. And that's kind of understandable. And Jim is like... How the hell can they, you know? But that's 2004. I mean, Lithes didn't, he wrestled one match in the 90s in Japan. That's not right. readily available in the, but, he, you know, it's, it, that's. I would just think uh, if you're in a, a particular vocation, you're going to want to learn about sure. the predecessors. Yeah. Would Derek Jeter have been a better hitter if he didn't know anything about Ted Williams or Willie Mays? Yeah, I, I think there's, I think with wrestling in particular, there's those couple, you know, booms. You know, the, the Hulk Hogan one, I think, brought out a lot of people. And we didn't have the same mechanisms that we do today to just fire up YouTube or even VHS. You know, VHS was brand new for all intents and purposes when Hulk, you know, Hulk came in. So uh, fans then didn't really have an outlet or a window. And I think with the WWF strategy, they, they would do a, a clean wipe. Hogan had been there three years before, mm -hmm. four years before. He'd slammed Andre the Giant on television in, in Hamburg, and it was no big deal. I was at Shea Stadium yeah. at, at the Bruno uh, the Bruno Zabisco cage match. Yeah. They had 38,000, they said 40, whatever. They had, they had a lot of 35,000 people. people. Biggest gate since the match of the century. And... Uh, Hogan and Andre, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, in the middle of the card after Inoki, Larry Sharp. <laughs> and uh, I believe uh, Andre won clean. Mm -hmm. uh, Freddie Blassie was managing Hogan. Yeah. It was funny. They put the ring out at second base. Ah. <laughs> they didn't have any ringside seating. It's on um, YouTube. Yeah. There's a funny thing of uh, Mick Foley and someone. Oh, I think it's Michael Cole or Taz. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I think it's important to know history. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I think it is too. I I do think you can be inspired by something modern, and and I think that I think we would be too hard on the young kids for using that as a jumping off point. Like if I was 16 years old and I never saw wrestling, but I really liked, I turned it on. I really liked Seth Rollins, or I really I thought Roman Reigns was awesome, or Cody, or Jay Lethal, or the Briscoes. I can I can give somebody a pass for that. I think it's just when you jump in and, and kind of what what hits you and what hits that nerve. Right. Well, it's all good. Um, we got to mention the uh, not only is there a Monday night watch Ring of Honor watch party. Yeah. But now there is a Wednesday night. Yeah. Ladies division. Yeah. Women. Women's division Wednesday. Is it inappropriate to say ladies no, now or something? Ladies. Ladies is fine. Yeah. Ladies is fine. Uh, just the official Women's branding. Women's Wednesday. Yeah. The official branding is ROHWD, women's division. Now, that's this is on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Premiere 7 p.m. 
Um, you just log on youtube.com slash ring of honor, 7 p.m. You click play on the most recent video and it's a live premiere. And, uh, you know, pulling back the curtain, we've recorded a lot of women's matches over the last couple bubble tapings. And there's a lot of talent that folks have been asking for that has not been seen before in Ring of Honor, including the four we just saw in the last week. Now, what was the name of that uh, almost like a, a goth Oh, Max. Kind of wild woman. Max the Impaler. Yeah, like like from Mad Max, right. female version. Well, they they identify as they, and that's uh, something we didn't notify on the broadcast because we didn't know at the time, so I want to make sure okay. that that's clear. So they they identify as they, and uh, they are our first, as far as I know, non-binary wrestler in, in uh, Ring of Honor, which All is pretty right. neat. And uh, it was quite the contrast because she was teaming with Roxy, who was 19 years old, who <laughs> it was quite the contrast between this, this rugged individual and then this like uh, pristine, uh, just uh, almost, you know, you know, just this young, vibrant person. Yeah. And it was an amazing contrast. Watch your words. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, on the other side, Lainey Luck, who is a, a, a raver, <laughs> a yeah. partier. Uh, and she was, she was teaming, uh, on the other end. And, uh, you know, that was quite about <laughs> who was the fourth girl. Oh, the fourth. Oh, the fourth, oh wait, you put me on the spot here. No, that's all right. Cause <laughs> I don't remember either. Ian's Ian's calling, uh, dozens of matches and, uh, there's a lot of talent. So to, uh, to slip on a name there, there's no shame in it. Cause I can't remember what I had for breakfast. Yeah. That match that was, uh, high end. I am who right. I knew it was some odd name, and she's great. She's a champion in uh, Shimmer right now, and she's been to Stardom, our partners over in Japan, and uh, she's also from the Texas area. This Texas area is, is hot right now. You see all the talent that's wrestling from Texas, including Thunder Rosa, who's been in Ring of Honor before. She's on AEW, NWA. We never say never about her showing up in Ring of Honor. Um, you know, you see her. You see a lot of these women from the Booker T School. Uh, the reality of wrestling. That's where Roxy came from. Laney Luck has spent uh, some brief time there. As not his, Lady uh, Luck, Laney. Lady yeah, Luck. Laney. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Ring of Honor. We're trying to innovate again. You know, Ring of Honor was was innovative in the you know times of Brian Danielson and the times of Samoa Joe, Homicide, CM Punk. Uh, we've been innovative with the the revitalization of the Pure Tournament, and we are we're looking for diamonds in the rough right now for this women's division as we launch it again. And uh, you know, I'm excited because. Any four of those competitors, I think, could be could be cornerstones. What do we have this Wednesday? Do you remember this Wednesday? We just saw Sumi we Sakai. To say? Yeah, we just saw Sumi Sakai versus uh, Vita Von Star, and Sumi's a, Sumi's a, a fan favorite again. She she had a, a change of now, heart. Isn't that the uh, she? Yeah, she. Is. Say, what kind of hold on? They can say what kind of ambassador are you, Carrie? Isn't that the, the 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 rough tough lady who's with Vinny? Yeah, that's that's she is part of, she's part of the righteous and uh, yeah she uses some uh, underhanded tactics. She's a real life Cirque du Soleil style performer. Cool. And that was before she entered Ring of Honor and before she entered wrestling. So she's got some really innovative offense in, in the match. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. And then this week, women's wrestling taking center stage again. The in ring debut of Quinn McKay. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I just think of her as this nice, pretty young lady. I don't think of her as I don't think of her sure. as an athlete. But boy, am I wrong. Yeah. If you stand next to her to broadcast and, and you're lining up for the shot, and there's many moments where this has happened, I've stood next to her and they've told us to get closer. Because you never you're whenever you're next to somebody, you're never close enough. You gotta get pretty much shoulder to shoulder. And so when Quinn McKay stands next to me because shoulder to shoulder and accidentally bumps me with her shoulder, I move. She is a she is concrete. <laughs> so if for whatever, she's got a concrete physique. She could deadlift 300 pounds. She could squat 300 plus. All I'm saying is, you know, she's a gym warrior and we'll see what happens. Was she involved in roller derby? She was. Yeah. Yeah. She is. She is a badass. She is a, a roller derby veteran. Because I saw her post something about that and we'll have to do some kind of episode uh, talking about roller derby a little more because it was the... Uh, the T-Birds. Ste the stepchild to, uh, to, you know, it was wrestling's brother. Right. You know, and, and even on TV, they would have 
often have wrestling and then roller derby was the next hour. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm going to have to, t- when I get to see Quinn, I'm going to have to ask her about that. And I wonder, see, here's a, all right, here's a perfect example of what I was talking about. I wonder if she has looked at these tapes of mm-hmm. this quote unquote golden era of roller derby yeah. of the late six. There was a lot of golden eras. Sure. But the I'm referring to the late 60s early 70s with mm-hmm. San Francisco. There was two leagues. There was the Roller Derby, okay, which was San Francisco Bay Bombers. Mm-hmm. They were the baby faces. Okay. And all their all their opponents, they never had a city. <laughs> I mean, they had a city. <laughs> yeah. Sanford, it was the Midwest Pioneers, <laughs> the Southern Jolters, um, the the uh, New England something or others. But the they they didn't have a particular city, and uh, so you know what? There, later on, there was the New York Chiefs, but you had that, and then you had the roller games, and that's which was the T Birds, yeah. And you had the Los Angeles T Birds, mm-hmm. and uh, their opponents. Oh Lord, <laughs> um, I can't remember the names of their opponents, but they were more of a ooh. Roller game, roller derby was more of an NWA Ring of Honor style. Okay. And roller games. There was more theatrics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I remember the refs getting involved a lot in, oh, the, in, yeah. the, roller ga- in the roller and games. And it was an obligatory over the rail right. bump <laughs> right. like on the last jam that yeah. you know, the heel team would take. Mm-hmm. Todd Sinclair is a big roller game. Right. <laughs> he loves to ask him about it, if you remember. Or maybe I'll be there. Ask him about the great Skinny Mini. Skinny Mini. <laughs> I've heard Dave Meltzer talk about Skinny Mini. Quite yeah. Bit. Yeah. Meltzer's. He's Meltzer. a roller derby historian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was from the San Francisco area. Mm-hmm. And when we did that, go back and listen. Um, the, our very first, by the way, I think it's our 55th episode. Wow. Speaking of 55. And yeah. Five, our first episode was about the Cow Palace disaster. Yeah. And when we were at the Cow Palace, in between me weeping <laughs> and going, oh, why did I get involved? Oh, why did I get involved? In the office of the Cow Palace, in the back, they had up, um, oh, everything from... Uh, Maybe Ray uh, Stevens and Pat Patterson. Right, but they also had like a Rolling Stones advertisement from the Cow Palace. Wow. Where they'd have a Led Zeppelin one, and mm-hmm. of course... They had roller derby. Wow. And Dave Meltzer was at that show. Wow. Okay. And yeah, it's, it's the history. There's so many uh, websites and, and uh, podcasts and so many things about pro wrestling. But like uh, Kevin Sullivan says to me, he goes, you know, he said, oh, wrestling might die just like the roller, like the roller derby. Mm -hmm. It pretty much just died. Yeah. Um, but this is all for another episode. Sure. Because uh, there's a lot of factors that went into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so Quinn McKay, I'll have to talk to you about some. I would like to think that she's at least seen these tapes. Yeah. And and for her, her and I, she's a little bit younger. Not too much, but a little bit. Um, we would have both had access to ESPN Classic. And ESPN Classic used to package mm-hmm. in very convenient hours, Roller Derby, UWF, Herb Abrams, UWF. And American Gladiators, back to back to back, in a very cool. They used to call it the Power Hour or the, the Action Hour or something. But they used to have those three things, at least in close proximity. So if you were interested in those kind of things, it was available to people our age, and it was the '70s version that would well, air Kuma on. Kuma K's got to be younger than you, right? A little, I think five or five or six years. It's not polite to talk about a lady. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely impolite. <laughs> So I'll, I'll take it. Well, I'm going to ask her about it. Yeah, yeah. So she's a, she's a tough cookie. She's facing Angelina Love. Jumping into the deep end. That's going to be good. Yeah, it sure is. Um, last week when we were I was we were talk I was talking we were talking about what we've been watching. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I was mentioning this great Frank Sinatra documentary, and I've been reading a book. Um, about Yogi Berra. Oh, okay. And I don't know. It just, I stumbled across it. And uh, he's such a classic guy. And it was it's almost like the pre, 
baseball stuff was really fascinating. Do you know where he came from? Like what city? I'm guessing New York. Mm-hmm. You would think so. Yeah. But he was from St. Louis. Oh. And he was, now I'm going to give you a name here. You're going to know this name. I'm, he was his best, one of his best friends and classmate and baseball teammate in school in Little League was Joe Garagiola. Yeah, he was a Yankee too. And he was a, a TV announcer. Right. I think he announced wrestling also. That would make sense. But yeah, Joe, they, uh, and growing up in St. Louis in the 30s, like every city, whether it was, you know, you're in Boston, you're in New York, mm-hmm. you're in Newark, the neighborhoods were completely segregated. So where Yogi grew up, they called it, it's not a politically correct term now, Dago Hill. Mm. And, you know, they would have like Juville. Oh, geez, <laughs> and this, yeah. That's just the way it was. Yeah. And, um, but I never even thought about it. How did Yogi get his name? His name was Lawrence. Yeah. How did he get the Yogi name? Do you know? No idea. Someone who knew him saw something about uh, something involved with the Buddhist religion. Hmm. And they said, oh, he looks like one of those yogis. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. He, was, he just, he was, he didn't look like an athlete. No, short and stout. Short and stout. And another thing that I found fascinating was that he got drafted. Hmm. And... He was on in the Navy and he was on the ships that were storming Normandy. Oh, wow. So you had, boy, that was a, that was a rough place to be. Yeah. You had thousands of guys who parachuted mm-hmm. out of the planes yeah. to go on the back lines. Imagine this. Yeah. They're I just can't even... jumping out of a plane because they wanted to trap the uh, German forces mm-hmm. who were close to the beach. Then you had the boats that were releasing, I don't know what would be worse, to be j- jump out of a plane behind enemy lines yeah. <laughs> on your own. And they don't, they don't have any communication. No, no communication. Or be a guy that's just, go ahead, go yeah. in the water, storming the beach. Mm-hmm. Well, Yogi's boat was, um, they, they were shooting uh, cannon shells onto the beach, eventually then to go on the beach. Oh, wow. So he survived that. Yeah. Um, he never would talk about it because mm-hmm. he saw just horrific, you know, there was thousands, of, you know, thousands of allied deaths mm-hmm. and thousands and th- thousands of enemy deaths. Mm-hmm. But he never spoke about that. And it was really it just, I just found it really interesting. But, and, and he went on to be one of the all time great Yankees and a Hall of Famer yeah. and a manager. Right. Uh, for, for the Yankees and the Mets. And the Mets, yeah. And most of all, he was known for his uh, yogiism. Sure. You know some of them. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a couple other. The probably is other the other most famous one that is well known is, uh, it's like deja vu all over again. Right. <laughs> now I was I said to AJ, do you think he was witty, or he was just saying this like he didn't realize what he was. I believe he didn't realize what he was saying. Yeah. He, um, See, these make sense to me though, and I know they're anachronistic. I know they're. I know, but like, let me throw a couple more. In. Yeah. You can observe a lot by just watching. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> one of my one of my favorites here. Hold on, the future ain't the future ain't what it used to be. <laughs> and last but not least, although there's dozens more, always go to other people's funeral funerals. Otherwise, they won't come to yours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So Yogi Bear is really cool. Yeah. He, and when he came in when he came into the league, uh everybody was like, oh, this guy's not gonna make it. And people were you, you, I remember a few times in the podcast, and I'm telling the stories from the street. He, he said to me, Boy, you guys were you all were mean. Right. <laughs> well, back then they used to tell Yogi, you look like an ape. Oh, geez. And that was just a nice, you know. You look like a damn monkey because he sort of did. He had real long arms, but 
he came in right when Jackie Robinson was coming in. It's 47. So yeah. the stuff that Yogi endured um, was nothing compared to what Jackie Robinson yeah. had to go through. I, and baseball players back then in general were mean. Oh, yeah. I, t- I talked to Kurt Simmons, who's still with us, who's who played on the 50, the last living member of the 1950 Phillies. And some of the things that he he endured as a white man, you and we what talked about. Say? Oh, geez, he would get called all kinds of stuff, and he just said they would. The trash talk was just incredible. <laughs> that you would be, they'd be yelling at you from the dugout, whether it's the Cubs or the Dodgers, or you know, the Dodgers were apparently the the best at it. I, apparently, Pee Wee Reese was oh a, yeah was a big time trash talker, and he would yell at you from the dugout, and he would. He would MF this and MF that. And so, yeah. That's just the way it was. That's apparently the way it was. And so, um, you know, when you're when you're generally privileged class says it was bad, you can't even imagine what, what can, Jackie... Jackie Robinson, yeah. I mean, you know the story. Oh, Besides... God. Even Pee Wee Reese himself, his teammate. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the, the you know, the, he was a second baseman. Mm-hmm. These guys sliding into second on a close play. Spikes up. Spikes up. Yeah. Which was part of the game. But there were really. Uh, yeah. It, it was it was incredible that he endured that. So mm-hmm. there, there's great stories in the Yogi Berra book. Um, oh, 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 oh. Um, last week, we got off on a. I don't really know how to explain it, except we're just talking about life, love, and you know, life and death, and love and yeah. feelings, and this and that. Uh, it was a good episode. We didn't mm-hmm. run. We didn't run around with through the uh, the peep show, right. and, the, and the drug spots, which is which is coming. The peep, the it's sex store is coming. But um, the week before that was the gurney episode, <laughs> right. and I guess what I heard from I heard from a lot of people. But I heard from not one, but two of Farrell's children. Really? Yes. One of them. Wow. Yep. Yep. And I was like, I saw the name. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say the name, but. uh, Through Facebook? Yeah. The son, Mm -hmm. the youngest son who flipped the the break. (laughs) He said, hack. Carrie, had, now, now once again, uh, Farrell uh, is no longer with us, mm-hmm. and uh, he, he, you know, he he was really good to me. Anyway, so I felt funny telling the story because I know his kids and his ex wife are around, and so the son said to me that he said, "Oh, Carrie, I, I listened to the podcast." I, I that last week was unbelievable. He goes, I don't remember that exactly, but I almost pissed myself listening. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, hey, man, uh, I just want to tell you that, you know, your father was a very special person and he took care of me when a lot of people would have kicked me to the street, which uh, we didn't even get to that part yet. But, you know, mm-hmm. I went with him. I took a chance with him, mm-hmm. as you remember, in our earlier episodes. And then I got a message from one of his twin daughters. Oh, okay. And she too said, I listened to the podcast. Um, there was no one like my father. <laughs> and, I, and she says, but do me a favor. My mom's not crazy about it. So I'm like, <laughs> tell her, tell her, I, I get it. Yeah. You know, and I told both of them that, you know, these stories could have been embellished a little. Sure, you're hearing them secondhand, and, right? Uh, you are you didn't bear witness to the great, <laughs> right? So um, the son did not say, "I didn't kick the brake." What are you talking about? <laughs> right. And the, the the daughter didn't say, "I don't remember that." Right. <laughs> they enjoyed it, so uh, I I appreciate them reaching out. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. At sure. You know, we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings at anyone's expense, but uh, Farrell was good to me. And we have a lot more to talk about with Farrell. Um, mm-hmm. This is going to be a short episode because we, we, we have, uh, we know you have to make it to the bubble. Um, but uh, to, I want to try to keep it on somewhat of a positive note. 
um, not that it, the uh, a good friend of mine called me today, and one of his parents is not doing very well. Mm. And I sort of wanted to talk about that, but we, we, we can talk about that next week because it'll sort of tie in to where we left off with the Gurney story okay. and 94-ish. And I was clean and sober or abstinent, if nothing else. And my parents <clears throat> had moved from my old hometown to, you know, down the shore. Mm -hmm. They downsized and they started, uh, had a major decline in health. Mm -hmm. But I'll tie it into with what my friend uh, called me today about that. Um, you know, I, I used to say when I was out running amok, talking to like Dustin or whoever I was friends with, you know, I'm so screwed up that, and I was the only kid. I hope that I die before one of my parents do, because I'm not no. going to be able to handle it. Yeah. And people be like, you'll be able to handle it. So we'll talk more about that on next week's. But before we... Before we go away, I had a brilliant idea. Okay. And I'm going to give you a chance and AJ, you a chance to get in on the ground floor of, oh, a, wow. of a guaranteed moneymaker, especially with the spring, the springtime coming and the summer season. AJ was talking about going to Bonnaroo. Yeah. And I'm going back down to Florida. I'm you're going, going to out. Florida. Yeah. You know, for better or for worse, people are going out. And I've had this idea brewing for a while. And then suddenly it hit me. What if we make a portable glory hole? <laughs> oh my God. That's right. Oh, Jesus. It could be oh, yeah, picture this. Oh, <laughs> picture oh, this. It could be folded up. Oh. You, you would unfold it. You're describing a cornhole game <laughs> with the bean bags. Yeah, like, like this type of, of material, oh and you can it, it could have uh, you know um, hinges that unfold. Is it plexiglass so, at least? Because we no, think we think you no. Can't, you can't. Okay. Be All right. You can't be. Oh my God. That's the idea. So let's say you were at music fest. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna allow that in music fest. <laughs> or maybe maybe you were bouncing around. Bon oh, Bonnaroo would be a beauty. Wow! And you just can just put it up, you know, and <laughs> see you know see what wanders by. Oh my God! What do you think? I think somebody's gonna get arrested. <laughs> I think for you. Maybe for unlawful construction at the very worst. I mean, what no, <laughs> you, you would have it. it. You, you would just have it. Do you wear it like a sandwich board? Do you put it on yeah, your head like a mat? Yeah, fold it up. <laughs> and when you get to the right place <laughs> and the right crowd, you unfold it and there it is. Are you, are you wearing a mask at least? So yes. You, okay. Oh, okay, good. absolutely. All right, we got to stay safe. You got to, <laughs> does anybody check your vaccine card before you... You'll have a be, sign on the on the uh, you'd be uh, on the front side. It'd be a scout's uh, honor uh, thing. You'd have to. <laughs> I want people to be safe. No, no, no. You would show your vaccine card. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, oh man, think about it. Think about it's going to be a money maker. I thought you were going to say all-purpose cleaner, no. water to because I got so much pollen on my cars and my oh. driveway and. I could use some of that 400 to one dilution <laughs> for the, but a portable, oh my goodness. Yeah. I think, I think someone would, I think someone would abuse it in the wrong place and someone would use it without a permit or something. I'm not even going to the. Well, if for nothing else, it's definitely an interesting concept. It is. And I'm surprised someone hasn't thought of this before. I bet you they have. Yeah. I bet you they have too. I just haven't been going looking for it. If you know what I mean? Stop at some truck stops. <laughs> Jeez. Go in the bathroom. You know what I heard about? May, well, I don't know if we can say this on air. The one, you can. the one down on three hundred nine. There's that weird truck stop that has a restaurant, and it never looks busy. But there's well, that's always, right near an adult bookstore. It is right near, near the those adult. Asian yeah. uh, rub and tug places. I didn't know that. That's what their specialty was. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm always wondering what's going on at that truck stop because it. Who needs a truck stop on 309? There's a McDonald's three miles down the road and a Burger King a mile down the other way. Well, truck stops have always been dubious. Yeah. You, you saw the Queen movie, right? Yeah. The Freddie Mercury one. I've seen There's Something About Mary where Ben Stiller accidentally gets arrested at the truck stop for soliciting a prostitute. Well, maybe we'll talk about more of that next week. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> as well as as well as tending tending uh, taking care of uh, in the situation of uh, you know loved ones that get sick. All right. So. All right. Well, something and, to look and, forward to. And portable glory holes. Portable glory holes. There you have it. Only here at Last Stop Penn Station, the only place you're going to hear about this. <laughs> so as long as we're being safe about it, as long as it's consenting adults, why not, right? If you're safe, if there's consent, who, you know, let's let's do it, right? All right. <laughs> so there you have it. Hopefully we'll get a patent on that by the time we have the next episode. We don't want to lose out on this multi-million dollar idea. <laughs> what appears to be just a large box for Portable, portable rectangle you can put yourself by. <laughs> oh, geez. Ah. Be, someone's going to get arrested down at Music Fest for trying this. You know that, right? One of the one of the people that we went to Tull with is going to try, oh. it's gonna try this. Be the perfect plot spot for it. There you go. <laughs> at the polka plots, at the big polka tent. Well, <laughs> we, we'll, leave the, we'll leave you with a laugh and hope that you, or, or else you're either laughing or... Or you're sitting you're, there, like, you know, astounded, like, what the hell are mummified. they? Right, mummified. Mummified. <laughs> but uh, please subscribe to Last Stop Penn Station. Where yes. else are you going to get this kind of information and, and entertainment? You, Come you're on. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. And we're going to have a lot of fun next week. I'm going to be in the bubble, but we're recording this one a little bit ahead of time. And we're going to take you through, uh, we're going to go back to the, the topic of caring for some loved ones. Because uh, my parents are getting older, and that's that's a little scary. They're in good health now, but I remember what happened with my parents' parents. So I'm kind of interested to see where next week goes. Yeah, and I was also supposed to uh, talk about the beautiful new flooring. Yeah, that's uh, thank thank you. I want to talk more about it because I had, I have a phobia when people are doing work in my house. Mm. And I want to remind me next week to talk about that. I don't know if that's something you ever experienced. I, yeah, I certainly do, especially with COVID. So not well. I just don't like. I like my space, and yeah. when there's strangers in it, even though they're here to help me. Right. <laughs> it's, it's just an odd thing. But uh, we'll talk about that next week. That sounds good. And we will be back next week with you here on yet another episode of, of uh, Last Stop Penn Station. <laughs> Listen to 55 and 5 on ad-free shows. Watch the 55 and 5 videos. Catch up. While He's we're got his break. mind on the new invention. On the new invention. <laughs> I'm very clearly distracted. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about these bubble matches that I'm called. We just got some of the, the signed bouts, which are very exciting. And uh, Maybe I'll be seeing some of them. Who hopefully. Knows? Fingers crossed. And uh, we hope you will, too. So watch Ring of Honor this weekend. See Quinn versus Angelina. Uh, listen to Last Stop Penn Station next week. Check out 55 and 5 Catch Up. Check out BassanCreative.com yeah, for all your web design website, needs. Y'all. Yeah, get a new website. The figures are sold out. Oh, They're gone. They're gone forever. And I'm stupid because I should have bought them because Brian, uh, Brian Myers and Matt Cardona said... Hey, you're going to bring some micro brawlers. You'll be able to clean up at the merch stand at the big, big live podcast I'm hosting. Which is what date? Which is June 11th. That's June 11th. Jimmy well, Seafood. And I don't got diddly anymore. I'm cleared out. I got the three I have for my pen. Bupkiss. <laughs> so, so, who oh, care oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you got a micro brawler, if you got the all in I program, can give you the one you gave me no, to take down. No, no. If you I'll got, loan it to you. I, you know, if you're trying to complete your Starcast poster, I'm on that, the original one. If you're trying to complete your all in, uh, I'll sign whatever you want. You know, make a donation somewhere nice, do something nice for somebody, and I'll sign whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna, we're looking forward to that. I'm also just got word I'm calling the Hanakamura tribute event arranged by Sumi Sakai and Hanakamura's uh, mother, Kyoko Kamura. So that's gonna Where's be. Where's that gonna be? It's gonna be in Japan, but I'm gonna be doing it live from the United States. Okay. So that's going to be fun. It's uh, May 23rd, I believe. It's a Sunday morning. I think morning, morning, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. morning. So that'll be fun. There'll be more information. We'll get you that soon. So. All right. <laughs> so for AJ, for Kerry, Ami, and Riccoboni, thanks for watching. I want to thank Eric for the show notes and all that fun stuff from Discover Pro Wrestling. I want to thank you for listening. Hope to have you back next week on Last Stop Penn Station. Glory. for listening to Last Stop Penn Station Podcast. Rate, review, like, subscribe, and share on your favorite platform. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or at laststoppennstation.com.